Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We have six really big stories for you today, uh, spanning from a little bit of negative with Nintendo, with Nintendo Switch Online, and some stuff they're doing with older platforms as well. Uh, but then we have some positive with some brand new trailers and information for a Switch exclusive coming out in July. Uh, we also have potential rumors floating out there around Nintendo's exact plans for the month of June in terms of talking about game news. Uh, and yeah, there's some updates on that long ongoing Metroid Prime remake rumor. Uh, we got some, some new details on that as well. And oh, by the way, we kind of end the show today talking about two massive pillars in the video game industry looking to actually be bought out and this is this is simply incredible to be completely honest and i don't really know where the chips are going to fall now all that being said we are giving away two copies of mario strikers battle league mario strikers battle league is an upcoming game coming out on june 10th and we are actually doing this giveaway to kick off our prime gaming fest event happening on june 9th at 9 a.m running through june 14th uh, so yeah, pretty awesome. And by the way, uh, we're actually kicking off the event, not only with this giveaway. So if you want to enter, head down to the pinned comment or to the description. We also are doing a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament that you can sign up for right now. Again, details on that will be down in the pinned comment and the description. Without further ado, let's get into our very first story. And this deals with the Wii and DS eShop. So the Wii and DS eShop went down a couple of months ago at this point without any explanation. No maintenance on the maintenance page. No word from Nintendo. They just sort of swept it under the rug. And at the time we said, I think Nintendo's hoping that we just forget about it. Well, it's been now two months and they're still not back the wii and basically the wii and ds no longer have anything internet wise to use anymore they cut off online support a while ago now they cut off the shop which means you can't re-download anything uh that's obviously the big thing here is people worrying about digital purchases they made like virtual console games on wii yeah you can't re-download them anymore so you can't like get them on a new Wii by re-downloading. You have no access and it's been two months. And if you remember, Sony got quite a bit of backlash when for the same era, PlayStation 3, they were actually trying to do the same thing and shut down the shop. And there was so much internet backlash that Sony backtracked on that and ended up not closing up their digital shop. Well, Nintendo didn't announce anything like Sony did. They just did it and have gotten away with it now for two months. And so Game Explain, wanting an update to this, actually reached out to their contacts at Nintendo, asking again, hey, why are these shops still down? Is there an update on this? To which Nintendo simply said, no comment. If you ever wanted evidence that Nintendo is attempting to close shops and sweep it under the rug and hope we all forget about it, this is the evidence right now. There, Nintendo is still refusing to even make remarks about these shops being down for two months now. It's very clear it's not maintenance that's keeping these shops down, right? It's two months. They clearly do not plan to bring them back. And this is obviously the scary thing is since Nintendo is not communicating about this, are they going to communicate when they drop Wii U and 3DS? Are they going to communicate in 10 years, 15 years when they decide to shut off Nintendo Switch servers? That's the thing that makes us scary is the lack of communication. Like they at least warned us when you could no longer buy Wii U games, but they're not warning you when they're going to actually turn off the Wii U shop. Oh, we'll continue to, to leave the Wii U eShop open for, you know, uh, an unspecified amount of time. That's the key thing. Un specified they warned us when we could no longer buy things on Wii and DS but it was always an unspecified time when they would take the shops down that unspecified time seems to have happened two months ago uh and that sucks there's no communication no chance for fan feedback and maybe that's why Nintendo wants to avoid that situation where Sony made the announcement before taking down the shop and had a whole bunch of backlash Nintendo's like hey let's just do it and see how many people actually care and well there's a number of us content creators maybe making a little bit of noise about it at the end of the day I don't know that it's a big enough chunk of the audience that Nintendo's ultimately going to care. I don't think the backlash is really that much. Just look at how people are quickly moving on to conversations about upcoming Switch games instead of focusing on this. But it is important, and I wanted to bring it up because, hey, this could affect us down the line with platforms you might care more about and have more digital games on. You know, like a Nintendo Switch or a 3DS. Now we get to talk about Kirby 64. It arrived in the eShop like last week or the week before. I don't know. It's, it's a rather recent release, and 
all of the patch notes and updates we've seen to Nintendo Switch Online seem to show that Kirby 64 had the least amount of work done before release. And there's one thing in particular that's exclusive to this version of Kirby 64 that's not in the original, and that is a massive game-breaking bug. So found this originally on Nintendo Switch Reddit, and it says Kirby 64 has a game-breaking bug in the underwater levels on Nintendo Switch Online. Getting hit by certain damage sources underwater causes you to enter a hit stun forever and you need to quit the level to fix it i don't remember this happening on the original hardware and uh went on obviously later to confirm this doesn't happen in those same situations on the original hardware this is an emulation specific fix now to give nintendo a little bit of credit they are probably going to patch this right they made several patches to fix things with ocarina of time on the on the platform and many other bug fixes including mario kart 8 or no, mario kart 8 mario kart 64 so they have gone through the process of actually releasing patches and, and, and fixing these and since this is getting some traction out they're probably going to patch the kirby 64 as well so one benefit of things being online like this is patches can come and fix it but something like this feels like it should have been caught. This isn't even that hard to trigger. This isn't like something that you have to go out of your way to intentionally trigger. This is just naturally can happen when you get hit underwater by certain enemies. Like getting hit by enemies just in, in a very basic way should have been something properly tested. Clearly wasn't. They probably didn't even get to the underwater levels to test them out if I had to guess. Because it definitely seems like they just sort of threw this at the emulator. It looked like it ran. Someone played it for a couple hours and said, screw it, let's throw it out there. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not a proper testing job. I do wish they would hire QA testers sometimes that would play through the entire game uh, before they decide to release it because this probably would have been caught in that case. But hey, it'll get patched. It's unfortunate, but it does show just a smidge of, I don't want to say laziness, but carelessness in how they're releasing some of these games because a bug like this is a little bit inexcusable. It didn't even exist in the original game uh, in the original release so like this is just something that th th this isn't like the water has changed colors or the fog is missing this is like literally something that makes you lose progress and that's not good now next up we're going to talk about live alive it's coming out in july I, it's a it was originally a japanese exclusive game now i don't know a lot about it but there were three brand new like sort of commercial trailer things that dropped you guys can watch here and i'm just going to read some description of this off of the uh, wikipedia because i don't know a lot about this game because it was japan exclusive so it says live alive is a role-playing video game in which the player takes on the role of eight different protagonists through nine scenarios while each narrative has the same basic mechanics individual stories have unique gimmicks these include the use of stealth the lack of standard battles or using telepathy to learn new facts to progress the narrative with the exception of one scenario the player character navigates themed environments ranging from the overworld area to dungeon environments battles are triggered differently for each scenario some are random encounters some enemies have sprites which can be avoided while others are entirely scripted the turn-based battle system is used across all scenarios and features the player character and sometimes a party fighting enemies on a seven by seven grid with characters able to move and perform actions such as attack and using particular skills skills can be used without limit though some take multiple turns to charge some abilities imbue tiles with extra properties such as healing a character or dealing elemental damage there is also a different skill system in place there is gaining levels with experience points which unlocks new abilities though in other characters progression is locked behind story events in one scenario techniques are learned through seeing an opponent use them each character can also equip and use items such as accessories to boost attack or item to recover health if the player character or party is defeated the game ends uh and that that's just kind of a general gist of of the original game and obviously you know, I, i'm really excited to see this i like turn-based uh jrpgs uh this is one that actually did not commercially do well when it originally came out it only sold like 220 27,000 uh copies and like that's not a lot it actually was considered a flop which is why it never really released outside of japan i'm very curious if now coming back out on a really popular platform like switch if it's going to get that reinvigoration like Octopath Traveler and others did and if people are going to start treating this like this is a brand new IP because hey there's only one game in the series because it's not really a series I guess it's only a one game only one hit wonder that wasn't really a hit uh and what's going to happen moving forward so uh yeah I think it's going to end up selling very well on Switch and uh that lets us get into our next story and, and and this one is a bit of a doozy so we have a sort of rumor I'm saying this it's worth talking about 
but it's still going to be sort of a rumor just based on what the source said. Um, so it says Nintendo uh, is planning to do a number of small showcases in June, a number. So this would be like three, maybe four, uh, instead of one big one. So basically they would have like a, a some sort of show thing every week in June to show off various games instead of doing one big Nintendo Direct. Now, this comes from Jeff Grubb, and I, I want to be very clear on this this is the most faint of rumors from Jeff Grubb because he went on to say he heard this is something that Nintendo has considered, but he has not been able to actually confirm it. So this basically means he just kind of heard a whisper from a guy who knows a guy um, and he didn't actually want to report it. Uh, but basically a bunch of viewers were pestering him on one of his uh, games beat uh, podcast things. And uh, he just said, you know, OK, well, I, I've heard this thing. That could happen with, you know, spreading out the news over multiple events in June instead of one direct doesn't actually have any confirmation on it. So, yeah, it's just something to, to worth considering. So could Nintendo actually, instead of doing one big June direct, spread it out across multiple announcements? I guess that's something none of us were probably considering, but it's possible. It also could just mean, hey, Nintendo's going to have that Pokemon event, which will be hosted by the Pokemon Company, uh, and then there'll also be the, the June Direct. I have no idea. The fact that he hasn't heard a a enough to actually confirm it this close to June, remember, we're like a week away from June. So the fact he hasn't heard anything when we're this close kind of makes me think, mm, he's not willing to confirm it now. Chances are there's probably just going to be a standard June Direct. But I wanted to float this out there as it is something that is being reported and just something to at least keep an open mind on. So next up, we have an update and a clarification on the Metroid Prime remake rumors. So remember, the rumors started back in like 2018. Originally, there was gonna be like a Metroid Prime Trilogy remake, HD remastering, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and then later on, we find out, oh, it's just Metroid Prime 1. Well, a lot of the stuff we got from Emily Rogers and then uh, Nate Drake or Nate the Hate. And let's just kinda go into what they say here. Uh, some new stuff that came from Emily Rogers on the fam uh, Famicom board, so the Fami boards. Uh, just yesterday, and she said, back in 2018, Retro Studios' original plan was to develop and release the entire Metroid Prime trilogy in sequential order. So she's claiming that was the original plan. That might help explain why it went through a longer than normal development cycle. So, hey, we're doing all three games. This can't just be like, you know, crap it out in a year, right? We're, we're gonna need some time to do it right. Uh, but I don't know if those plans changed once Retro, Retro took over development in Prime 4. So she is saying, hey, as soon as they got the reins on Prime 4, obviously the trilogy was probably not the priority at the company. Uh, but she goes on to say, here's what I know. An HD Switch version of Metroid Prime 1 definitely exists. So she's like planting my flag in the ground. Prime 1 HD exists. It's floating around at Nintendo of America slash Europe. I'm only able to confirm Prime 1 but I won't rule out the possibility of the entire trilogy. So she knows beyond a doubt, Prime 1 HD exists and is at Nintendo of America slash Europe, kind of floating around, you know, maybe deciding what to do with it. What she doesn't know, I have no clue what Nintendo's plans for Metroid Prime 2 and 3. She goes on to clarify though, Nate Drake, AKA Nate the Hate, says his source found remasters of Prime 2 and 3 sitting on a dev kit at Nintendo. So basically there's a dev kit somewhere at Nintendo of America or somewhere and they have uh, Prime 2 and Prime 3 on there remasters so hd of, of prime 2 and prime 3 so that's where the the whole trilogy comes from is when you combine those two sources together they're happening does this mean we're going to get anything announced this june no does this mean we're going to get anything out this year no it is metroid prime's 20th anniversary this year so maybe things line up i guess we'll see huh and our last topic is just something that's been happening uh over the last week and, and a number of things have come up so electronic arts is up for sale they are trying to be bought out they had a deal on the table with mbc uh that fell through uh we found that out quite recently so mbc will not be buying ea uh and there's a whole bunch of other people involved in potentially buying ea from disney to you know a whole bunch of major corporations we haven't heard microsoft or sony uttered yet or nintendo for that matter not that nintendo could afford them not that sony could afford them. microsoft probably could uh, we saw what they've paid for activision blizzard or what they're attempting to pay but it wouldn't make sense for them to try to acquire ea right now after activision blizzard they're trying to get that you know approved once that's approved you know that's when you'll see microsoft maybe acquire some other things 
Uh, it's quite interesting to see EA for sale. EA is actually worth quite a bit of money. Um, so I, I don't really know what's going to happen there because we're, we're talking about maybe the most expensive sale of all time in the industry. Uh, but they're not the only ones. So Yves Guimont, uh, the CEO over at Ubisoft, has been really fighting against takeovers and sales for quite some time. But a new report has come out today that Ubisoft is actually going to be exploring a buyout, uh, which means they're going to sell the whole company so long as their share prices can get up to about sixty dollars, you know, I'm sorry, sixty euros, I guess is the, the way to look at it. So once their share prices get up to sixty euros per share, that's when they want the buyout. So basically, they have a target value they want to hit that they're willing to sell for, that they're unwilling to sell for right now. Uh, and yeah, you can see, you know, right now where they're currently at with their stock prices. This is quite interesting. Uh, that these two massive ones, EA being the bigger of the two, are looking to be bought out. We we have entered this realm of buyout city, and I, I'm relatively okay if these studios get bought out by other third parties. You know, if Tencent gets involved, I know some people don't hate Tencent, uh, Disney, etc. If they get involved in these buyouts, they can at least keep the games multi-platform. Obviously, what people worry about is. Is Microsoft going to swoop in and buy anything? Is Sony going to swoop in? Is Nintendo going to consider Ubisoft too big of a partner to potentially lose? And are they going to try to swoop in and buy Ubisoft? There's a lot of considerations here. And I, by the way, I don't think Nintendo is going to buy Ubisoft. I don't think Nintendo is buying EA either. I think both of those are going to be priced too far out of nin what Nintendo's comfortable spending. Uh, and I, I think, you know, based on the target price Ubisoft's going for, Nintendo wouldn't be able to afford them anyways. So... Uh, and that's with cash on hand. Now, Nintendo could maybe get approved for a loan, but I'm not so sure that Nintendo wants to do that. Nintendo prides itself in not needing loans, that it could just live on its own money. So, yeah, this is obviously a, a very weird state of the industry we're in. We're in an industry where all the big players are moving. I mean, what's next? Take two going to be for sale? You know, is Take two going to? I'm going to go out there and, and, and want to be bought out by somebody. Uh, I, I'm also curious why so many studios are trying to be bought out. Like EA is still massively profitable. Ubisoft is still pretty profitable. Uh, so why do these companies suddenly want to be bought out? Now, in terms of Ubisoft, maybe maybe Yves Guimont's looking to wash his hands of it and get away. EA doesn't have any major controversies going on at the moment. And it sounds like any buyout deal would keep you know andrew as the ceo and leading the company anyway so i guess maybe it's just a way to get a payday and, and no longer be a publicly traded company i'm I, I don't i don't really know i'm trying to understand if this is like a positive or negative for the industry i just don't know it's just kind of a thing that's happening like activision blizzard needed to happen because it was so corrupt it needed new leadership and the only way it was going to be through a sale so that's one thing but like ubisoft seems to have been navigating their controversy just fine ea hasn't had a major employee uh controversy so i i don't know man this to me is uh, it's just weird anyone else feel weird about this we live in an era where pretty much every major gaming studio is going to be owned by somebody different within the next two years. And that's just these independent companies that are like these behemoths and megaliths of the entire video game industry suddenly being bought up by companies that are even bigger than them. I, I just don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad. You guys let me know what you think I'm, I'm really unsure what to think about all of this right now uh but at least it looks like these companies will be bought out by people who are going to maintain them being multi-platform uh, i just worry that they might be concerned even more with profits than these companies already are next thing you know you can't even get past level one without paying extra money because you know a lot of these companies just want just want the money want the dollar bills so Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. It's been a lot of fun doing this episode of Prime News, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.